Hello there, I'm Sigma Stosh here and today I'd like to talk to you about my Santa Cruz RS. They call it RS because they're not allowed to call it um, a Royce Mech, but it is in the image of a Gibson Royce Mech, which was a Hawaiian guitar that was introduced in 1934, the same time as the original Jumbo, um, probably to compete with the, uh, the Martin Dreadnought, the 14 fret Dreadnought. Um, this was um, a signature model of Royce Mech who played all sorts of things, the Wizard of the Strings, and, um, and it was designed only as a Hawaiian guitar with a very deep body, five inches, um, and 12 fret neck and half a tree trunk as, um, as a neck. Uh, I've long been a fan of Jackson Brown and uh, I think it was him that made us aware of the Gibson Roy Smek Hawaiian guitars which had been converted for Spanish playing uh, by having the, the neck completely reshaped, fretted and, um, and the neck angle made appropriate uh, by a chap called McAllister, I do believe. 1934, Gibson bought out two models, uh, one in Rosewood and one in Mo Mahogany, Stage Deluxe and the Radio Grand. Um, and um, and they didn't last very long. I think they were um, discontinued in about 1938, something like that. I'll put the details in the comments below. Um, but it had um, a deep body. Uh, the sound hole was moved back somewhat, and um, there are only two struts bracing this great big cavernous um, um, lower bout. I wanted a Gibson style 12 fretter and ordered a DS12 from Husson Dalton for my 60th birthday in 2008. It was Sitka over uh, East Indian Rosewood um, and with a 1 and 13 16 neck, which was not standard, and had some little flim flams on it as well. Um, it arrived in time, but it had a multitude of structural and finish issues from the start and uh, the, the after-sales support from uh, Hudson Dalton was frankly insultingly poor and uh, frankly it was a very expensive dead loss. Uh, I lost thousands over that. Um, Gibson brought out the Jackson Brown models uh, but I tried to, they failed to impress me. And one day I met a guy uh, with a Santa Cruz RS at a bluegrass camp. He briefly let me try it and it seemed, seemed about right. So I commenced a long look for that. Uh, I think they only made about between 70 and 80 of these so far. I think they will make them, but only to order, of course. Um, and um, I found one in a dealer called Northern Lights in New Hampshire and uh, had a conversation with him and thought about it for a while. And the while was a little bit too long because when I rang up with my credit card details, he said, I sold it today after it had been hanging on the wall for about two years. Uh, so um, he offered to order me another one, which might have been a good idea, but I hummed and hawed, and about a month later, this the very same guitar appeared on the US eBay. And um, the gentleman that bought it decided that the five inch depth was just too much for his shoulder. Um, fortunately, uh, possibly due to my ex losing a lot of weight and exercising, my exercise routine, keeping my upper body as strong as possible, it, that doesn't give me a problem. A full 16 inch width, of course, and um, just the two spaces give it a very full and powerful mid-range. And it's really all about there. Nothing wrong with the bass. Or the treble. If you like, the EQ I feel is not so much a smile, bass and treble, but there, there. It's a smile turned upside down. There we go. Um, the neck is a very, very comfortable C profile. Really like that. Uh, one and thirteen sixteenths nut, two and five sixteenths string spacing, and a twenty-four and three quarters scale length. I use medium gauge strings on it. Um, I tend to use a, uh, a TAD 50 and I 
I've been experimenting with a tad 60 lately. The seller warned me of a small fault on the fretboard. There's a little kind of dip where it looks like there might have been a, a, a um, I don't, something went on that somebody's tried to smooth out. And he was very concerned that I was aware of that. It makes absolutely no difference, you can't feel it in the playing, but in a certain light you can see it. Um, the very dark tobacco sunburst um, is beautiful, um, but it is, it's like a black car. Everything, everything shows on it, and it's got a few tiny weeny little mini um, marks which are probably from polishing rather than anything else. I don't think it's got any dings on it at all. I've had it since 2012 um, and it's 2020 not being gigged a great deal. I find that I have a tendency to play harder when I'm on stage and um, uh, the short scale just gives me the possibility to overplay it a little bit with the band, but playing solo, absolutely fine. Um, according to Santa Cruz's website, this is an Adirondack top. I don't know whether that's true or not, because I understood it was Sitka. I can't tell. Um, but uh, the sound, 2012, it's certainly coming out. It was definitely tight when I bought it in 2012. Now it's sonorous, that's a good word. Um, finish is a little delicate. It seems that the, the finish on this, compared to my Collins, for instance, is a little bit softer, hence those tiny, really polishing scratches. Um, so there it is. Came with um, a beautiful but extremely heavy Emeritage case. And I can't stop playing it. So there we are, my Santa Cruz RS from 2012. Thanks for watching. Another guitar up soon.